have you ever thought about modular construction and the puzzle that's required to put such a complex structure together? Modular construction is the future, but how can us as engineers bring innovative approaches to such a complex solution? How can we put the puzzle together? I'll be breaking down the key aspects to modular construction so that you can make sure you bring your designs and pushing us into the 21st century. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. One of the key aspects to modular construction is the fact that it needs to get broken down into unit sized pieces. So you need to build together the complex building that we have behind us into modular pieces that can be put into position as we build. So when we do this, we need to look at both the connections, how stuff comes together and how can we transport it to site. You see, you need to break it down to units that can be both lifted up and strong enough not to rack. So when you position it down, it connects as you need it to. You need to make sure that you're efficiently packing it onto some sort of transportation structure as you just don't want single pieces being transported to site as that would be super inefficient. So how can you pack it or make it strong enough so they can be stacked on top of each other? Does that mean that you need to make bespoke frames that the modular pieces go into? Do you need to add additional bracing or strength for those temporary conditions? And even sometimes as because the weight's coming to site and potentially the finishes that you have on it, how can you make sure that it's durable? So how are you protecting it from the weather in the temporary state? These are just a number of aspects that key to understanding the fundamentals to modular construction. But here's some other aspects that you need to consider. As we said about the start, transport and logistics is critical. And this is not just breaking it down to the modular state, but also making sure that you've got a clear line of transport as you don't want to have huge delays between elements coming to site. So setting up your logistics is critical that things come to site when you need them. Sort of like the car industry, you just want that just in time approach. So things come precisely when you need them. That means if there is a delay, sometimes there's an issue, but you just don't want things stacking up or things being too far apart for when things get delivered. So logistics is highly critical, not only in how you pack it down, but also how do you transport to site to make sure it's efficient. There's also transportation loads that you may need to consider. Are you traveling by rail? Are you traveling by truck? Are you traveling by sea? All these have different loads. Now what you may think about, rail is probably one of the worst ones that you can have. As the tracks bounce up and down, you have these highly repetitive effects that can cause major impact effects on your design. So if you're traveling by rail, sometimes the rail may be the governing factor, not the in-service conditions or even the lifting. So just something that you need to carefully consider when taking this modular approach. Design limitations is also something that's currently in there, but something that we can potentially solve. So how can you break it down with limitations that don't limit creativity or don't limit people's designs? As you can't bespokely do everything as we're really going back to the traditional approach, but you want to make something that can be rapidly prototyped and rapidly manufactured. So it means a lot of repetition. So how can you break down your limitations in such a way that has minimal effect on your design? Site preparation is something that is key to any modular construction. There's a lot of time you're going to a really accurate construction from a factory to an inaccurate in-site situation. Foundations are quite inaccurate to start off with. So how can you cope with these inaccuracies or improving the constructability and tolerances that you have on site to making sure that you can fit your building together? Something that's careful consideration when you think about any modular design. It's not just the design of the element, but also how do you connect it into on-site elements? There's not everything can be done in the factory. Perception and marketplace acceptance is something that we need to work on. There's a lot of time modular construction is seen as being blocky, repetitive. You see a lot of buildings are repeating over and over again. That's what we think about modular construction. And that's not what something that we want in our house or our home. We want something that is bespoke and uniquely ours. So when we're looking at the modular space is approaching in such a way that someone can make a building that is theirs and customizable enough that it doesn't look like their next door neighbors. So this is something that we need to consider both when we're looking at how we approach the modular design, but also marketing it to everyone else as it's not only improving quality, but also improves unique flair on every single design. Financing and insurance issues are something that carefully needs to consider. It's anything that is new typically doesn't want to be taken up by the financial or the insurance companies. As they look at it going, this is something that's new, it's untested, we haven't seen it before, despite the increased improvements. So we need to really sell the benefits of how on-site construction both helps them and helps others and actually improves quality, not decreases it. So this is something where we're taking our products out to the right people, working with financial institutions and insurance companies to making sure that they understand the true benefit of the modularization and about how it actually decreases risk, not increases it. Sometimes as well, we need to make sure that not everything can be done in the factory. So how can we also incorporate with the traditional methods of construction for the stuff that is more bespoke that we can't cope with? How can we make sure that's easy to integrate and not have a reduction in quality is what you don't want to see is amazing quality here, poor quality here. 
So making sure that some way of allowing us to integrate both the traditional methods and the modularization in a nice way that means that you don't understand the difference between where the modularization starts and where the traditional method starts. You want them to look imperceptible in quality, both at that highest standard, of course. Quality control is also something that I think is critical with the way you set up your factories, but this is something that should be better because of your modularization. As you're doing it in a factory, you can have stricter quality control procedures to making sure that nothing goes out the door that isn't up to scratch. As if it comes to site, it's gonna be so much harder to fix. So you wanna catch it before it goes out the factory door. So just something you need to consider about when you're doing the factory is the quality control measures that you've put into place to making sure that modular construction is heading down the right path and things get caught earlier rather than later. We need to bring out all these problems into a bespoke module so it really needs engineering wizardry and multiple disciplines to come together to help solve these problems. Not any one person, not any one discipline can come together and solve this issue. As you need to integrate with services, you need to integrate with other aspects, you need to think about how you approach it in a different way. So it really requires an engineering story behind each component and how it got to where it got to. So it's about figuring out the building blocks of this complex Meccano set that you need to put together. It's like a giant Meccano set that you put together as it comes to site. And with any Meccano set, how do you know that they're putting it together correctly? So something that needs to be carefully considered is your documentation. Your documentation has to be higher quality than the traditional methods. You see, traditional methods can just put together anything and people generally know how to do it. It's been built like that for a long time. So you don't need to show how many nails you need to put in. You don't necessarily need to show how each connection is done as it is something that is known. But in the modular space, this is not the case. As you've spent lots of time spokely looking at it, how that element comes together, how can you reduce the on-site construction is that allows you to both speed up and reduce costs as well but with that complexity it means that each element is uniquely connected so you need to explain in great detail about how to connect those elements so your documentation needs to be at this amazing format and this is not necessarily a problem as that detail can be used over and over again i mean spending the time a couple of times and doing a detailed documentation of that element is extremely important to making sure that you're moving forward correctly. This level of documentation also helps you with that integration that we talked about before between traditional methods. If you can clearly explain how your product works in such a way that someone else can understand it, then work out how they can integrate their uniquely bespoke on-site construction with your system. Despite these challenges, it's really the path forward in engineering. We need to build faster, we need to solve the housing crisis, and we need to build better quality structures. And the fact that we haven't been pulled into the industrial age and the construction industry is a problem. But that's not an issue. That's a problem that everyone is looking to solve. So we want to build taller. We want to build faster. We want to build at higher quality. And this is something that modularization can bring to every project. You can also look at integrating other smart features into your building. As you've done on site, you can integrate more of those complex monitoring systems or other aspects into your structure, meaning that you know how it's behaving and making a better built environment for everyone. So modular construction is gonna go from your cozy little houses to your higher skyscrapers as we're trying to push the limit of modularization and factory built construction. It's something that's coming and something that you need to think about and about how you can integrate it into your designs. And if you want to look at it about another way that how you can think about engineering to making sure that you're thinking about the right aspects, I have a link to a video here about the 10 aspects of structural engineering that will make you a better engineer. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube or Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.